What's up, guys? Nepenthes here, and welcome back to another episode of the Arsenal Evo RTG. I am being pressured by the stream to spend every last coin I've got on the Supreme Golazo Guaranteed Pack. This is a really good one for fodder. 50 rare gold player items rated 85 or higher, which means everything can literally go into the exchange and carry us on for days to come with more fun packs. Two guaranteed to be 87 or higher. A Galazzo hero or icon guaranteed to be 89 or higher. And then three lone player picks of 10 matches, which we might even use into champs as well. And we're going to open it. We're going to restart our coin balance. And we're going to hope that this pays off. You know, like a Vidic, a Kaka, like a Pushkas, like one of the good ones. A Sol Campbell would be uh, well worth it as well, to be fair. Um, so let's find out what we get. We're going to have lots more packs to come as well. And of course, more champs gameplay. We, of course, know we're getting some big cards. We're starting with... I don't even know who that is. Canu Inform. And the reverse is going to be another Inform. I don't think there's any Informs I even care about this, uh, this week. It's Matt's Hummels. Let's see. Come on. Come on. Give me, give me lots, lots of good fodder. We have got 389s, which straight away is decent. 488s, which is amazing for the exchange. Do we see it yet on this page? A fifth, a sixth 88. That is amazing. 487s, 486s, 18 dupes, which is probably going to be 85s and 86s. I think this is going to be where we see what we've got. So we start with 90 Park and 89 Francescoli. It's going to be the next page that's going to be the big one for us. Well, that's awful. Keen, Berbatov, and Viali. I have been absolutely, categorically sh shafted. Still, like, I act like that's not all bad. It's not all bad. But it's all like, you know, Prince, discard icon. 94 prints, discard icon and duplicate. Van Persie, duplicate and dirt cheap. Holler, decent but dirt cheap. Keen, dirt cheap. The 85s are expected. The new cards, the cards that we're going to try today, are going to be keen. Yeah, we'll try that keen and we'll try Viali. They'll be two of our forwards today. Aerial on Viali could actually be quite good. Four star, five star. We'll pop a hawk on him. And uh, try our best to utilize him. We're also going to get three loan picks. So we will play Roberto Carlos for 10 games. We will play Baby Vidic. I probably wouldn't. I'll probably discard him. And we will play Didier Drogba for 10 games. All right, there you go. So... That was an absolute nightmare, but let's rebuild the team. All right, guys, we have got an almost full Galasso team here, actually. We've got Viali, Drogba, and Ginola now going to be playing up front. Marquez, Lampard, and Rosicki in that midfield. Roberto, Carlos, Kivio, Saliba, and Cafu along the back line. A lot of the Arsenal remnants have gone. We've got them on the bench, but it's fun to try these new cards, right? And that's what we're going to do for today. So this is the squad. What we're going to do is play five more weekend league games and then we'll have our 84 by 7s um, and some other stuff to end off with and maybe a new SBC because I've still got that fodder that I haven't done anything with yet. But I'm excited to use this team and see how it plays. Let's get in games. All right, guys. We have got a little bit of a longer gameplay segment today. And that is because I think, if I remember correctly, a few of these games went to extra time and penalties. Um, and I also had a game that you're going to see here that resulted in me getting it back to 5-5. Five, five. The guy quit. That's right. And just before we begin with the comments, wouldn't, like, I know EA don't allow the kind of forfeit match or people quitting on a draw to give the other person a win because there used to be an issue within the game where you could force disconnect somebody. And we got, when I say there used to be, we're literally talking like 2012, 2013, 2014. And sometimes you play a game... And you like you'd go one nil up, and you would just get disconnected from the game, and you would get the loss, right? And your opponent would just play the game again. 
And if that gives a win, if, you know, it, let, let's say it's 2-2 two -two and my opponent pauses the game, picks on forfeit match, and then leaves, they don't want that. Like, that. that's one thing, I think, actually. But if somebody goes to 2-2 goes to two -two and then dashboards and quits, EA can't or maybe can or can't, I don't know, differentiate between that person leaving versus, for example, their internet going or versus, for example, their opponent doing something unscrupulous. So, obviously, what they don't want is for people to figure out a way to cheat the system, to force people off so that the other person gets the win because, effectively, you could kick the game off, force your opponent off, you get the win. Happy days, right? The, the thing that I'd say to that is, like, first of all, if somebody clicks forfeit match, if somebody literally pauses it and goes down to forfeit match and clicks on forfeit match, the other person should just get the win. Flat out, standard, 100%, they should get the win. And so that obviously opens the community up for a little bit more of a toxic nature of, okay, I'm never going to go pause and quit anymore. I'm just going to dashboard every time. But there has to be a way. There has to be a better way to allow people to obtain wins that they would deserve to get when people do that. Like... We are in 2024. Technology has advanced massively over the last 10 years. There has to be a way. Either way, <coughs> into comments. Um, Wilco Weekly says, You're probably like a lot of us, Nep. We don't care about losing anymore because we have just accepted the gameplay is horrific. But it's the way we lose games. Constant bounce back, bounce back slash rebounds from the keeper. Easy passes being intercepted. Tackles not working. on, And their players just run through you. That's what frustrates me the most. And yeah, you are absolutely right. Um, I have two things that trigger me intensely in fc24 um one of those things is exactly what you've just described which is effectively bad gameplay right it's when you're not connected properly to a server or if you've got bad like <clears throat> jitter or input lag or whatever the case may be but that bad gameplay is very triggering and there's been many games like the game that i played in the first game here that i lost that guy was just very very good right there was a few things that i did wrong <clears throat> excuse me that i could have done better that I could have improved upon. And that's me being bad. That's me not understanding or like appreciating the game mechanics properly and not using them properly and so on and so forth. Um, and that's that's fine, right? Like when you take a loss like that and you're just bested, whatever, right? Even if you had the best team in the game, you probably still wouldn't win that game. Um, and th th then we can then go on and discuss whether or not the game mechanics are fun or whatever, you know, the step over speed boost in spite of the fact that I still haven't learned how to do it, it's still, it's so frustrating as a, uh, as a mechanic, because it's just, it's just unrealistic. Um, it's just unrealistic. And I know that there are infinite unrealistic mechanics in this game. And I use those as well, right? The power shot pop volleys from 45 yards, super unrealistic, right? And yeah, I still score from them, but that's what I mean, right? Like the, the, in, in general, <clears throat> um, there's a lot of unrealistic game mechanics. And so that's a little bit frustrating. That well, that that's probably like the other most frustrating thing. Like the other thing that triggers me in this game is unrealistic game mechanics being hyper efficient. For example, the pop volley that I do score is a power shot, which means it's manual. Which means not everyone can do it. And there's also, <clears throat> to a degree, a skill to where you can do it and where you can do it from. <clears throat> so right there, I was I was streaming these games. And right there, I was kind of like talking about and looking at again the 4 3 2 1 and the formation that everybody uses and the players that everybody uses. And it, it's a shame, like, you know, and again, the, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, it's a shame that. <clears throat> sorry, I've got to clear my throat here. It's a shame that, uh, in spite of the fact that there's, at this point, according to foot.gg, over 2 billion combinations of players that we can have billion because of evos and what paths you can take with how many players there is two billion different versions of players that can be in this game and we see the same 15 to 20 and just like i talked about with like the quitting and stuff this is on ea man and the reason why it's on ea is because they just create the same problem year on year where there is a very 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 clear meta and <clears throat> so, like, especially this year, because of the play styles and play style pluses, that clear meta is also then 
incorporated um, into how frustrating is that? I was getting back into that game as well, but that clear meta is then incorporated into who people use because you're not going to want to do a step over speed boost with somebody that doesn't have quick step or um, whatever the other one is, quick step and uh, rapid, right? Quick step and rapid, especially having one of those as a plus, st step over speed boost, boom, happy days, right? And it's one of those situations where it's like, if that, if that step over speed boost wasn't the meta, those quick step rapid based style pl players wouldn't be nearly as valuable. And so there'd be a little bit more like range in people's teams. And there are certain things that you can do. So I was just looking at the hitbox here because the ball didn't hit uh, Gabriel's head. I like I thought he used um, the backline to frontline Evo on Gabriel to get aerial plus and power header plus. When he was had it after he scored this second goal, I was like, damn man, like fair enough. If that's how powerful that Evo wasn't that one. He just had the block plus Gabriel. Couldn't believe he was out jumping my uh, my players. Um, but yeah, it, like the the way EA create this game and the the refusal to patch broken game mechanics is the other thing that's just incredibly frustrating in spite of the fact that I know I take advantage of some of them as well. I need to start taking advantage of all of them because at that point, you know, you win more games, you're a lot happier when you win games, aren't you? That at least uh, I know I am for sure. And funny, talking about bounce backs and stuff, that guy there put a good tackle in, in the box and it just dropped straight back to Rosicki and I got the uh, the easy goal there. But um, yeah, the two things that are kind of like the most frustrating in this game is bad gameplay and just, just silly game mechanics, right? There, there's certain things that are like, they can't patch everything, right? They can't patch this game into oblivion. I understand that. And and I, I I half expect there to be issues and bugs within this game, just like there are in every single video game. But when something, when one thing is particularly broken to a, a really high level, I get that they won't, bro that won't like patch it based on a couple of high level players doing something that's overpowered. You know, if you've got 5,000 people only in a game that millions play doing some dumb dumb game mechanic they're not going to patch it but when there's something that's so crazy overpowered like the step over speed boost as an example how hard can it be to just reduce the the speed boost off of a skill move and that's it it's fixed right it is literally that simple and i don't proclaim to be a code or anything but based on how i know ea have done patches before in terms of like reducing the trajectory of a ball after a certain shot type or reducing other things after another instance. I don't think it's like the end of the world to just be like, hey, after a after any skill move, sprint boost or, or you know, um, the play style plus of rapid or quick step takes 0.2 seconds to initiate. At that point, you're still going to get the benefit of it as it should be intended, but you're not going to be able to do it off of the skill move. Anyway, we're going a bit too deep. Either way, um, yeah, I, I, I agree that, uh, you know, um, the bad gameplay is a bit of a problem. And sometimes, and, and this is where my own self doesn't help myself, sometimes I let bad gameplay make me start playing bad because I'm frustrated at the game, and then I carry that playing bad into the next game when there's good gameplay, and maintain playing bad. <laughs> That's the worst thing, isn't it? Um, uh, Gavin says, never fully agreed with your player reviews, but to say Cantona is awful is crazy. I, I think what you've got to understand and appreciate when I call a player awful, it's respective to counterparts, right? Of course, he's not awful. If you pair him or compare him to literally 99.9% .9 of the players that you can use in the game, He's incredible, you know? You're not going to use a bronze player or a gold common or, like, Raspadori over Cantona. But for an icon that costs so much, that has so many high-end properties, like, there are not many players in this game that have the pace and physical that he has, let alone a lot of the other properties. You know, 92 pace, 92 physical, 92 shooting, 92 dribbling, five-star skill moves, some really, really good play styles, 95 composure and just generally is a card that looks insane compared to what you're having to kind of pay to get him and to how good he is to counterparts that are a fraction of his price point he's awful he's just awful you, you like and i'm not saying like you know i've had this debate actually with people over a period of years 
where it's like instead of using let's say Mbappe instead of using 92 Mbappe you can just use like fall off for a fraction of the price and you won't get a hundred percent of what you get from Mbappe but you might get like 97 percent at which point why not just go and get somebody even cheaper than Sawloff and get 90%, 97% of Sawloff? At which point, why not just go and get a random gold card with high pace and get 97% of that player? At which point, why not just use a bronze player and get like 97% of that player? And then all of a sudden, like we've over, over kind of like over complicated the problem or the, the point of what's the point of spending millions on these top players when you can just get a player that will be basically as functionable for a fraction of the price. And when I think about Cantona, the way Cantona plays in game is more akin to one of those players that, is, that should be a fraction of the price than one of those players that cost millions. You know, when you have Mbappe, you know what you get from Mbappe. It might only be a small margin better than some other striker that you have. Same as Eusebio, same as the team of the year Messi, same as like, you know, Virgil van Dijk. You know what you're getting with Virgil van Dijk. So if there was a centre-back that came up and was 10 times more expensive than Van Dijk, right? But didn't quite play as good. In the way I would like phrase as he is awful because you can just go and get Van Dijk who is insane and a fraction of the price. And I think that's the situation with Cantona for me personally. I think he's a good player, but for the price you're paying, you don't get that great player like value that I think he should come with for the price that you're paying and for the stats that he has. Anyway, guys, we finished the gameplay for today. Jakob Kivior did get fully upgraded. Let's go and open some packs. All right, guys, the end of today, we've got some 84 by sevens. Uh, sadly, I actually lost another game. I'm 10 and five this week. It's just not clicked for me this week. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know what's happening, but yeah, 10 and five is not, not nice, not impressive. And uh, I don't know, I've gone from eight and two to 10 and five, like genuinely diabolical. It's genuinely diabolical. But we move, we're working on these Evos, still get our 11 wins, well, you know, 12, 13, 14, maybe, who knows, whatever it may be, it will be, but we'll still get the wins for the rewards that we want. Um, we have got the 84 by 7s to end off with today, that will hopefully yield us something quite nice. I don't know where I got these rewards from. I know I claimed some squad battles rewards, um, so it might be those, but uh, I don't really think, it's also from me half completing or two thirds completing the icon player pick, which you will see in tomorrow's video. Um, obviously, I spent 650,000 coins on that pack and uh, <clears throat> it wasn't so nice for us. I have used, and you might have heard me talk about that, Viali a little bit as well. He's awful, man. He's awful. Um, didn't like Drogba either, to be fair. It's going to be hopefully Diani. No, it's going to be Dembele. Dembele and Beth Mead. With 285s and 384s. All right, guys. Off the back of those dupes, I built two player picks. I was going to put the 85s into the exchange and discard the 84s. But I thought, no. Let's go and get ourselves. Look at that. See? An 88. And the uh, the team of the week grind is exactly where it's easy to get high rated cards and high rated squads. We love to see it. Uh, it's a really good combination that we've got from EA at the moment. We also have 84 by 7 number 2. What are we going to get from this one? England. Right back. Trent Alexander-Arnold. It is a double walkout. And it is uh, Hyung min Son alongside him. And again. Ah, these just haven't been very kind to me. They really haven't. All right, I went for some, uh, some exchange packs that time. I put the 284s into, the re into a regular player pick. And the 285s into the, ex the exchange. I just have too many 84s. EA, we need something to do with 84s and 83s. Um, and then we've got one more 84 by 7. We've got an inform out of this straight away. So French, centre back. Okay, so it's going to be Renard, which is great. She might be a duplicate. And a double walkout with McAllister from Liverpool. And we've also got in here 288s, 86 McAllister. Another another set of good stuff. I'm going to go back into the exchange grinder shortly, guys. Um, but first and foremost, yeah, looking at this club, um, I I had I didn't play the last game with Crouch. I played with Viali. This Viali card 
is genuinely awful. If he even scored one goal, I'd be shocked. Four goals, I'm, I'm more than shocked. I tried changing into a 4-4-2. I tried the 4-3-2-1. Like, I'm just not finding my feet with the players I want to use. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rejig a formation. I'm going to try and find something a bit new because I'm not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying playing with the team. And like, you know, what I really enjoyed about the players that you see on the bench is I was just enjoying playing with them. Um, I wasn't overly keen on Drogba. After using him, he actually got eight goals and three assists, which is very respectable. After using him in draft, um, I thought he was amazing. But yeah, he just really wasn't. Roberto Carlos was okay, nothing special. I didn't actually get to play that many games with these guys because I had two people, of course, uh, draw quit. Um, Leah Williamson, I'm not overly keen on. And uh, Ginola, Rosicki, I like. Marquez, I like. Crouch, we're going to Evo. Uh, Yuri and Timber's going to go, well, change back to a four-back now because I'm not playing the 4-4-2. Four, four, um, but I'm going to put a lot of these Arsenal players back in for the, uh, for the remaining five games. Just get some Evos up. Obviously, we want to start working on uh, Pullover and things like that. But yeah, that is going to be it for today, guys. Um, unfortunately, not my best weekend league run. However, oh yeah, however, um, not the worst either. You know, uh, we're still primed to get some decent rewards. And uh, I, ultimately, whether what, no matter what team I've got, no matter what formation I've got, no matter whether I use meta players or Arsenal players, the one very obvious factor is I just need to improve my mechanics on this game because I'm not playing very good. I'm not playing very well, and that translates into the results. However, for today, that will be all. Thank you guys very much for watching, and we'll try better for tomorrow. Peace.